Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the night's main event. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. While I have the opportunity, I want to help you guys out with your money. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's 1-800-5800-866. Many of you need help. And if you're not getting it from me, you're going to get opinions that are influenced by who knows who. Advertisers, seminar givers, book writers, real estate investors who have real estate to dump off on you. I have no vested interest in this. I don't have a seminar, don't have a book. I don't plan to write a book. I'm not selling any real estate to you. <laughs> All the real estate I've been buying, I've been keeping. It's that simple. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, um, well, let's start off this hour with Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, Tom, I got a question for you. My mom sold her house, right? Right. Hello? I'm listening yeah. to you. <laughs> don't don't end every sentence with a question mark, so I have to go, uh-huh, because it gets really tiresome to listen to. All right. So she got a hundred grand, right? Went through a, a divorce and put the money into two checks, 50 grand in her name and 50 grand in my name. She has no debts or anything, and... She, I, we're trying to figure out what she does with the money. What she does with the money is she paid off all her debts. She, she doesn't even pay rent. She lives with my sister. So she has no credit cards. No. Nope. No car she has credit cards, no debt. Her car is paid off. All right. And does she have an emergency fund? Um, she has an extra like eight grand that she has paid up. That's not enough. She, no. Yeah. You need to figure out what her monthly expenses are. Right. And that means for everything she spends money on, gasoline, food, whatever she spends, clothing, travel, okay. whatever she spends money on. Right. You need to figure out how much she spends, multiply that amount by 12, and she needs to have that in an FDIC-insured savings account. Okay. Or checking account. doesn't really matter savings or checking because the bank's paying hardly any interest anyway. Right. So uh, I don't know how much that is, but I would imagine it's at least fifty thousand dollars. You would have to have uh, put away uh, for that purpose. Okay. After she has done all of that, after she has paid all debts, after she has uh, uh, completely secured her emergency fund, the rest of the money. Uh, how old is she? Uh, fifty-four. Well. Honestly, she has a secure job. She has a secure job. It's guaranteed. Yeah, but when is she planning on retiring? Uh, probably not until she's 60. All right, but that's how many years? Six years? Six years. Yeah. All right. I mean, really, for the most part, what you got to be doing is putting that money into bonds. Municipal what bonds. Bond? Municipal uh, bonds. Municipal, yeah. municipal bonds. And, of course, uh, you know, if she lives in California, there are certain bonds that have tax benefits to her, but more importantly... It's tax free income. And who would I who would I talk to to look into that? Because my mom's originally from Mexico, so she doesn't really quite understand like bonds or stocks or any any anything like that, like financial stuff. Well, I, uh, one way to do it is to have uh, somebody at like a Fidelity Investments or a Vanguard. Okay. Um, because they do actually give you that kind of uh, information, and uh, this is not stock advice they're giving. Right. So I would I would trust them with that. Uh, and I would, how much how much would they charge for for like just going and speaking with them about money? Well, generally the way this works is at a place like that they'll charge you a fee for buying the bond. So the cost of the advice is in that commission. Okay. How much is that commission like usually to like have that idea in your It's head? not a ton. In fact, it's less for bonds than it is for stocks. I don't know the exact number, but it's nothing to worry about. She she can afford it. Okay. And uh, she should uh, hold those bonds and then uh, get that beautiful tax-free revenue she'll be getting. What about the, the situation with the money being in my name? 
How did the money get into your name again? She when she got the cash for the house, she put uh, she split the the cash into cashier's checks. Well, is the money is her, the money really for you, or are you just doing her a favor by holding it in your name? No, I did. She just told me there was a check in my name, but it's her money. I don't know why. All right, so it doesn't matter. You can sign the checks over to her, or you can cash the checks and then give the money to her. Okay. So I mean, that wouldn't affect me, like with my bank, like. You know, them filing reports on, you know. No, it might affect you. What it might affect is your taxes. You need to talk to your accountant about what tax impact that would have. Right. Even though it was just a gift. Well, not really a gift, but. Well, there's only so much in gifts you can get before you start getting taxed on it. Right. And I think $200,000 is way over that amount. So you need to talk to your accountant about that. All righty. Sounds good, Tom. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, is that Dinette? Dinette. Oh, Dinette. Yes. He wrote it like Dinette, and I'm expecting that you'd come with, uh, with chairs? six chairs and, some, and a four <laughs> mic quite. atop. Not quite. Tom, I've got a problem. Do they even not... make dinettes anymore? I haven't been to... Not, ever since Levitt's went out of business, I don't know if they make I think those. it's kind of a retro thing. Yeah, I'm I know. i sure. <laughs> I think you have your Swanson TV dinner on the dinette set. <laughs> True. That's right. Okay, question. I, I had I have an inheritance of about five hundred thousand dollars plus four rental properties. I'm currently a renter. I'm thinking about buying. Is now a good time? It's a great time if your plan is to buy a house and live in it for the rest of your life. Well, basically, I was thinking of taking four hundred thousand and putting that as a, like a, that's about a fifty percent down payment on what I've been looking at, and then you know banking still the, the extra hundred thousand, and of course the rental income and stuff. Well, as I tell everybody, there are no starter homes. But exactly. I'm not looking at a starter home. I mean, if you want to buy a house to live in, well, you're 50, I see her on the screen. Yeah. If you want to live in a house for the rest of your life. Pretty much. It's a, well, no, 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 not pretty much. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm talking the rest of your life. Yeah. We're talking about conservative financial advice I'm giving here. Okay. In In turbulent times. Okay, if you're going to buy a place, find your last location. Okay. And live and the place that you could see yourself uh, they have the they having your wake in the living room. Look at that. Having what? I'm sorry. Your wake. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> if you can imagine your own wake in your living room, you uh -huh. found the right place. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I got, I've been looking at a lot of places that really... Make sure it's big enough to hold your casket and your best friends. <laughs> and my husband's, too. <laughs> right, exactly. No, I'm just wondering if, if now's the time to do it. I'm, I'm... Now is a great time to do it, because if you're not planning on selling the place, it doesn't matter if the price continues to go down to a certain extent. Right, because, I mean, we have no, no debt whatsoever, and no credit card loans, no car payments or whatever. I'm just kind and, of... And will you have income to keep paying off the balance on that mortgage for long enough that you can pay it off oh, in, absolutely. in full? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, on that basis... Uh, hey, by the way, credit card debt? Nope, none. None. There, there, there's no better time to be doing this as long as you're buying a house to live in forever. You're not flipping. You're not saying, well, I'll live in it for a couple of years and see how I like it. No. 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 If you're buying a house for the long haul... This is your last best opportunity, the best opportunity you'll see in your life to buy a house. And and I put my money where my mouth is. One year ago this week, I bought my second home. Right. And I haven't regretted it for a moment. The timing was fantastic, and it still is. I'm just wondering if the prices are going to go down anymore. You know, I'm kind of <laughs> being capitalistic in that, in that response. Of, why, you know. why do you care? If you're not planning on selling, does it really matter? The price is irrelevant. Mm, that's, well, that's true. That's true, and I've got enough money to put a considerable you know, down. You know, you know whose problem it is? Your executors. <laughs> yes. This is what I always say about the two houses I own. People say to me, aren't you worried? Real estate was down 30% last year. You, aren't you worried about that? Well, no. The only person that's a problem for is my executor. Okay, I, I get you on I'm that. not selling these houses, but you see, that's a gut check, okay? I'm making a macabre joke for a reason. Right. Because that's really the way I feel. Well, that's kind of the way it is. There is no more flipping houses or anything like that. I mean, that that's the market that's gone by the wayside. Right. <clears throat> and I'm not interested in doing that. I'm just interested in not paying rent anymore. <laughs> well, I understand that. Uh, but, you know, paying rent is not a bad thing. It has been demonized, but it is not a bad thing. I paid rent here in Los Angeles for nine years after I moved here. 
Yeah, there was, if you, and you don't have the responsibilities of the house and stuff. Well, I arrived here in 1988 when the market was about to peak. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the, the, the market cratered in 1990. Yeah, about that. Yeah, and, you're right. And and it was in like a recession for like seven years. Yeah. See, and, my my biggest problem is I'm I'm the landlord for four, a joint landlord for four different other places, and it's like, well, shouldn't I at least be the landlord? Or, you know, own my own house. That, that, so. That's that's not the reason to do it. Well, it's kind of I, I want a house very badly, and it's it's kind of crazy being the position I am financially, and also you know, money coming in on a regular and I, and, and be sure to buy something that that mortgage payment is below your means, because you need if you want to enjoy that house, you want to furnish it properly. You want to insure it properly. Oh yeah. You want to be able to fix things when they break and not have to live with things leaking and dripping, which many people do. Hey, I do that now, and I'm a renter. No. Well, <laughs> where's your building manager? Um, my, my our landlord's just really sweet, and so we just go ahead and pay for a lot of the stuff. Has to be right. Done. You know, she's 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 a very reasonable landlord. So okay. Well, that's what you need to do. Okay, well, thank you, Tom. Darling, thank you. I appreciate the call. Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Number one in men. Men 25 to 54 were number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for making us number one of the afternoon in Southern California. one 800 800 tom We're talking about your money here. And before we continue your conversation about money at one 800 800 tom I'm a caller named Van. I talked to Van last week. And ironically, Van, uh, I think, is about to drive a van now. Uh, before we get into uh, what you're doing now, Van, uh, remind everybody of our conversation from last week. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I was down and out, and and I was going to go back to her. I caught her by checking her phone when she was in the bathroom. Uh, she cheated on me with her yoga guru instructor, and uh, I found the text that said, Miss you, miss you too. And uh, and I was, I was driving down PCH, and I said, let me call Dad, and... And you, uh, you said the key right at the end. You were like, and you're a fool, and you're going to take her back. And, uh, and that just, that rang true, man. And so I, I literally, I called a couple friends. I told them, you know, what was going on. I drove home. She was there ready to, to go work out, and, and I let loose. Like, something came out of me. I'm, I'm not an angry guy, but I let it out, you know. Knocked over a couple planters and, uh, and told her to pack it. And then I was packing it, and it was over, and, and so right now I'm driving down the street in the U-Haul, full of my stuff, and uh, and I had to call and tell you uh, thank you, and, and I needed a little support also because I'm a little uh, I'm a little shook right now, but but I'm doing the right thing, man. How did she react when you told her you were out? Well, she was she was just shocked. I, I think she's still brainwashed by the guy. Like she still defended him till the end. Like you know, like I don't get it. Like I'm really confused by that. Wow. She, Damn, she thought you should tolerate that? I don't think she knows what she wants. I, now she's texting me and she's all shook up and she she says she blinked her eyes and everything's over, but she's going to get home tonight. And I mean, it was all my stuff anyway, so it's it's empty. Like, there's nothing left. I even got the dog, man. Got my puppy on my lap next to me right now. <laughs> Unbelievable. And where are you going? Uh, you know, my, my pops died like eight months ago, so... So here's the cool part is that he left a lot of land up in Agua Dulce, like up to 14, and uh, and she hates it up there. And so she was like the problem with me buying it all and, and renovating the house. I want to turn it all into a music studio and make my dad's dream come true. And uh, and now I'm free to do it, you know? Wow. I'm, I'm very proud of you, Van. I'm proud you got it done. <laughs> I'm proud you know that I mean? you're out. I, I really am. I'm, I'm thrilled for you. If anyone is listening and they're going through this, it's not easy. It's not going to be easy. My stomach's hurting right now. But you're right. Like, they're not going to change. They're going to do it again. And, you know, you got to hold yourself up on a pedestal and say, you know, I'm not going to take that crap. I want it all or I want I want to be on my own, you know. And so I find the person 
who could give me that, or I'm just going to be, I'm going to be on my own and make my dreams come true. You know, right? I, I'm thrilled for you. I think that's fantastic. Good for you. Right on, Tom. So, so I'm on the right path, right? You're on the right path. Keep it going. <laughs> Right on. Hey, Dino was on the phone, and he pulled me right through. He's a great guy. Uh, uh, and, and tell him thank you for, uh, for you know, now, you, you, you changed it for me, Tom. Like, I was I was going to take her back, and, like, you saw, I saw the light, and now, and now I'm on my new path, brother. Good for you, Van. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. Love that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, Josh on the Tom Likas show. What's happening, Tom? Not much, Josh. Hey, I want to see your take on uh, what you think about investing in life insurance. Uh, do you have a wife and kids? I have a wife, no kids. What do you need life insurance for? Do you not uh, Are you not able to save on your own or invest on your own? Um, just basically my burial, my final expenses. Uh, I kind of went through a tough time the last couple years. I've been in mortgage for the last eight or nine years, and uh, yeah, the... I'm told that uh, life insurance creates an instant estate. Well, I, that's the sales pitch, of course, but uh, couldn't you just save up for your burial, your funeral on your own and have an account or your own what? investments? Do you, do you need a life insurance company to do that? What does something like that cost, Tom? What does it cost to put money away? Well, it's free. You start an account, you put money in. No, I mean, as far as, like, a burial, I mean, I've never had to, to bury anybody. So, well, it I mean, depends. It? I mean, are you looking to have a New Orleans funeral, or are you looking to go to Potter's Field? I don't know. <laughs> I want to be cremated on Pebble Beach. You want to be, no, you want you to be cremated, and you want your ashes scattered on Pebble Beach. There you go. There I, don't you think, go. I don't think they allow open flames out on Pebble Beach. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure that's not very expensive. And uh, putting money away, life insurance, it seems cheap when you're, you know, when you have those deals, you're paying nine ninety nine a month or whatever it is. But how many years are you going to have to pay? Right. I see here you're only 33 years old. I am. but, but Why but not just actually... save money and put it aside? Well, can I build up like a cash value or something? Or I, is what I'm I happen to believe, uh, well, the salespeople tell you that. I mean, you say it's what you're told. You're told that by the salesperson. Uh, life insurance, in my view, as someone who is a self-made millionaire, and my, my dad had life insurance, okay? Uh, but um, I must say that unless you've got kids, life insurance is for people who don't have the balls to save and leave the money alone. Wow. I hear you. It's enforced saving. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've always been told different, so that's what I want yeah, to Yeah, well, why do you ask the customers at AIG what they think of insurance? Well, didn't AIG invest all their money in mortgages? I don't care where they invested it. <laughs> the point I'm making to you is insurance companies like you to think they are like, they're like, uh, the, 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 like the Rock of Gibraltar, let's say. Uh-huh. Right? What was the, uh, the ad for, uh, AIG? I was at Shea Stadium the day it closed. There was a huge AIG ad out in the outfield. And is it big enough to be there? <laughs> Where? Bankruptcy court? Sure. I mean, again, you're 33. How about saving? That, that's definitely an option. Do it. All right, Tom. Hey, will you blow me up old school? Yes, I will. one 800 tom That's our telephone number. And uh, let's say hi here to Joshua on the Tom Likas Show. We're talking about your money. Hello. Yeah, how you doing, man? How you doing? Hey, I, I can't complain. Hey, I just want to know, uh, you say the 12-month emergency fund, like, like how much should I put up? I ain't got none right now, you know? Well, how much do you spend? And I, I, by the way, don't answer too quickly because you don't know the answer. How much do you spend in a month? Uh, Probably like... Probably like more than nine hundred dollars. <laughs> Probably a lot more than nine hundred dollars. How much is your rent? It's uh, like six eighteen. Your rent is six eighteen. Yeah, one bedroom. Okay, and what do you spend on groceries? Maybe like uh, one seventy per month or per week. Uh, like month per month. All yeah. right. So now we're already up over 800. 
What do you spend on uh, electricity? Uh, maybe like that's like fifty because I'm never here. I'm always at work. Gas. Like ten dollars. Cable TV. Uh, that's a good fifty. Cell phone. That's another fifty. Clothing. We got uniforms, so. Yeah, what do you wear when you're not at work? Oh, there you have it. Uh, that's that got to be like two hundred right there. So that's man. Yeah, maintenance on your car. Matter of fact, I got a car. No, I pay four hundred a month. Gasoline. A month? Or are we talking about a week? Like that's over two hundred. Two hundred a week. Uh, two hundred like like a month. Two hundred a month. Well, you see what I'm trying to tell you here, Joshua. Well, you have no idea how much you spend. You probably spend more than two thousand dollars a month. I bet it's more than two thousand a month. Oh yeah, there you go. All right, you need to, whatever that number is. You need to figure out what it is. Okay. Then you need to multiply it by twelve. Okay. And that's what needs to be in the bank. Okay. It is not to be touched except in case of emergency, like you lose your job. I get what you're saying. You got to do it. Hey, I'm going to do it. I ain't got no choice. The yeah. way the economy is now, I'd be a fool not to. You know, I'm looking out for you, and I think that uh, the most important thing is to be prepared for losing your job because lots of people are losing their jobs. You'd be surprised at the people losing their jobs. <laughs> you ain't going to tell me. I know that. I don't think you do. So, uh, and just check me out, uh, Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likes Show. Sorry I'm late. I was tanking up. It's the Tom Likas Show, the show guys love. Guys love women who love the Tom Likas Show. That's what the numbers say right here. Look at them. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Talking about your money. Crank that. Crank that, Gary. Show. Yes, Gary is. Uh, Patrick is deaf here. Deaf here. I'm, I'm here. Sorry about that, guys. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Did you want to talk to Tom? Yes, I do. Okay, hold on, please. See if I can get him for you. Can I help you? Hello? Yes, can I help you? Tom Likas. Why, yes. How are you, my brother? Do you care? I, 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 I do care. I'm doing great. I have a question for you, my friend. Okay. I made my money uh, years ago in the real estate market, and uh, obviously I've diversified now. What is your opinion on investing in the banking uh, or, or in banks right now? I, think, I, I mean, I know it sounds like a crazy question, but... I what, think what unless you, you are Warren Buffett or Benjamin Graham, he's dead, so you could probably take his Social Security number and pose as him. The point is, unless you are well-versed in investing, okay. that is extremely risky. Really? Of course it is. Which banks are you invested in? Well, I, I, I've never invested in the stock market. But if I, but if I you were at, going to, which banks would you invest in? City, Chase, 
the bigger banks that that hopefully Citibank go up. Citibank is on the verge of people are demanding it be nationalized. Do you right, but, but but even if the banks are bought by someone else, nationalizing a bank doesn't mean it's been bought by anybody. Okay. And that's why I'm talking who, to you. Hugo I'm, Chavez uh, nationalized the oil industry in Venezuela. Okay, I don't, okay. I don't think the shareholders received a big return on that. Right. I see what you mean. Then. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? If you're going to do any investing, you should be investing in things that are still going to be here when this is over. And that's why I was hoping the banks would be. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm hoping Santa Claus is coming to town, too, okay? The fact that you're hoping for it doesn't mean it's a good investment. Right. I will take your word for that. You know, I think the people who uh, invested in Circuit City were hoping that people would start buying electronics again. Right, but that's a little bit of a different kind of market. Too. How so? Well, you're talking about product as compared to, you know... A, Banks a, a, have products. Right. Certificates of deposit are products. Mortgages are products. Okay. Just then because, you, just because you. you can't stack it and put it on a shelf doesn't mean it isn't a product. Uh, uh, services are products. Okay. All right? So, uh, these are all consumer products. So not a safe bet? No. Okay. Now, understand, people who know what they're doing, like Warren Buffett, probably knows which banks to buy and which ones not. Right. But you don't. You're exactly right. So what you're doing is you're treating Wall Street like it's Caesar's Palace. Okay. Aren't you? You are. You, that, like I said, I, I know very little about, about the stock market. You are so. in the sports book on uh, Super Bowl Sunday. And you are betting on who's going to score more than 37 points. Gotcha. That's all it is. That's not investing. Well, I appreciate your time, sir. That's gambling. No gambling. No gambling now. There's no, no room for that. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I tell you, these guys are killing me. Killing me. Andrea on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? How are you, darling? I'm doing good. I wanted to ask you if it's a wise decision to invest in gold. Well, uh, it's not a wise idea to spend a lot of money investing in gold. Okay. Uh, it is a wise idea to have precious metals be part of your overall investment portfolio. Okay. Uh, generally, what that means is, how much is your investment portfolio? Um, well, I have a 401k. I have about a hundred grand invested in that. All right. So five percent of a hundred thousand would be five thousand dollars. Right. So about five ounces of gold. So that's all. I should only purchase that much is just to five thousand, and no, no more than that. Uh, that's or, uh, generally what is recommended. Okay. Because, again, do you know about investing in gold? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a gambler? Yes. Darling, haven't you learned from what's going on out there? Yes, I know what's going on out no, here. But have, you, uh, no, no. have you learned from it? Oh, yes, I have. I no, learned yeah, but to yeah, have money and don't get... But don't here's get the part you haven't learned. And save my money. No gambling. <laughs> I know, but I love it. No, darling, save the gambling for, for, for Wynn or, or Bellagio or somewhere like that. This is your life. Okay, so no more than 5%. No more than 5%, period. Okay, so that's, that's for gold as well as silver, any precious metal, right? Total of precious metals, 5%. Okay. Thank By you very way, much. By the way, what do you know about silver investing? Even less. Nothing. <laughs> Darling, really, I'm, my recommendation is you not do any. <laughs> but if you insist on going ahead and doing it, do not exceed 5%. Okay, well, thank you so much for your... your now, where help. are you going to buy gold from? You're going to buy it from one of these services on TV? Yeah, well, I hear it on the, on the radio all the time. Darling. They talk about, you know, oh. the value of the dollar and blah, blah. Darling, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Okay. <laughs> Do you think that those places offer the best price on gold? Oh, of course not. I was going to research it on the Internet and try and find the best place to go. 
But, or talk to Fidelity Investments. That's where my 401k is. Wouldn't that be the first place to go? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Makes sense. Just believe me. These places that advertise on the radio and have the Daily Gold update. <laughs> Are they know. scams, Tom? Well, if I said that, I'd be biting the hand that feeds me. <laughs> but let me just ask you a question. Okay. Instead of doing a commercial, some of these places will say, And now here's today's Daily Gold update with Barry Goldstein from Joe Blow Gold Incorporated. Gold is going up, up, up. Call 1-800-GET-GOLD now. Do you do you <laughs> think that, that Barry is going to give you the best price on gold? Of course not. Then why would you even think of calling a place like that? <laughs> I don't know, Tom. Really, I'm just starting out. At because you don't know what you're doing. And you're going to end up like everybody else out there who got burned. Yeah. Can't you? I know it's boring. Boring is good. <laughs> Gordon Gecko in the 80s, in the movie Wall Street, said greed is good. This is the year 2009. Boring is good. So I want to be conservative in boring? In your investing, yes. <laughs> so what would you suggest? And I should be better off put the, put the money in like a CD or something? Well, first of all, <laughs> do you have any credit card debt? No. Zero? Zero. Car loans? I know, crazy. Car loans? No car notes. Student mm -hmm. loans. I have a mortgage, but that's it. Right. And uh, what are your terms on that mortgage? Um, so you mean like 30 year fixed? That what well, you mean? How much did you put down and things like that? Oh, I put down um, 80%. 80%? Yeah. yeah. So you, you have 80% equity in your home? Oh, yeah. Why do you have a mortgage at all? So I can write it off on my taxes. What, what is the point of that? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, darling. See, again, you're proving my point here. In order to have something to write off on your taxes, you had to spend something. Right. If you pay, if you're in the highest tax bracket, I'll assume for the purposes of this conversation, you are. Let's say you spent $10,000 in interest on your mortgage this year. You only get back 5000 Oh. Well, that's not good, is it? You never get back what you paid in. <sighs> so I'd be better off to then pay off my mortgage and then have no debt at all, and then I can go crazy with investing. My, and away. I tell you, I put my money where my mouth is. I, am in the pro I have two mortgages, and my plan is to have both of them paid off by the first quarter of next year, completely. <clears throat> that's a great plan. Because, right, you know, if, if one of my mortgages is five and seven eighths, one is five and an eighth, how many investments are paying that much these days? Yeah. My, my mortgage, my interest rate is four, I think four and an eighth. Whatever it is. You know what the rate is on zero debt? Zero. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, you've given me a lot to think about, so I'll talk with my husband and. You know, hopefully make the right decision. So thank you very much. Hopefully you will. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A Tom Likas show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Here's Chad on the Tom Likas Show. We're talking about your money. Hello. Hi there, Tom. Uh, I just wanted to call and say that I think you're spot on in your advice that you're giving to the guy who wanted to invest in the banking market, the, the woman who wanted to call up and uh, ask about investing in gold now. And I think that your advice not to gamble and not to speculate now is uh, long overdue, and I think that many, many people would have benefited from that advice a few years back. Well, I've been giving the same advice for a very long time. <laughs> but when people hear these TV commercials and they watch CNBC and, you know, they see all these people saying, bye, 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 they, they can't resist. This is what they do. But I think, Tom, I think you add something in addition to that, and I think you're a first-class citizen in, in, in the debate that's going on right now and the services that are being rendered to the public in that your advice is very accessible. 
uh, for these people, for your callers, for the public, and I think that you're doing a great service for everybody. Well, thank you for that, Chad. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a great day. It's Megan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. I just, I had a kind of a different idea staying within the uh, live below your means uh, theory. I I only have $10,000 for a down payment. I made $97,000 last year. Unfortunately, I made the decision to furnish my apartment. So I have all the furnishings to go into a small house. Um, but my question is, if I bought a condo, I've been looking online right in my area. There's some for 108 to 117,000, which would put my payment with insurance taxes and PMI um, at about a thousand dollars, and then the condo fee of 250. So I'd be paying exactly the same as I pay in rent. Uh, would that be a good idea? No, number one, because you don't love that building. You only love it because you think you're getting a good deal or you think you're getting away with something. Right. Well, and you're not. <laughs> because PMI, you're paying for nothing. Let's start right. with that. If you, if you don't have 20% down, you are throwing your money away. But if I'm paying the same amount that I'm paying in rent, and that money's going towards my mortgage, but it's but, it, but, but you just what you just said. I mean, do you know how little goes towards the principal in yeah, the beginning? Six hundred and sixty-seven dollars, according to the mortgage calculator. Out of how much? Out of the thousand dollars. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that's not even true. Six hundred sixty-seven is going to mortgage interest. Okay, but you hear me out. So if I end up selling the place, say it doesn't even appreciate, and I still sell the place for 110 and I've paid, say, Darling, first of all, the idea, disabuse yourself of the notion that within five years you're going to sell any piece of real estate for for <laughs> the same amount you paid for it uh -huh. or, or more. <laughs> No, these what, are uh, discounted prices online. I, I, it doesn't matter. Discounted compared to what? Different. What are the what are these condominiums worth? Nobody even knows. Well, uh, you know, I've seen I have seen some very frightening stories that I've been reading, and I read these magazines and these publications, and, and I know you don't. That that the whole uh, assessment business is out of whack because nobody even knows how much property is worth anymore. Oh, completely, I completely agree with you. But uh, so the, so how, what, how much there? How much these condominiums are worth is something you don't know. They don't know. Nobody knows. Well, 1992 was when the last time it sold for 108,000, and the, in 2005, the same condo sold for 360. Yeah, but you know we haven't I had an unemployment. But guess what? We haven't had an unemployment rate like this since 1981. Right. So your your condominium is still overvalued. But do you think in three or five years, if you can sell it for the same, at least you've put into it? No, because you will have paid maintenance. You will have paid PMI. You will have paid the cost of owning the place. You will have paid property taxes. Right, but all of that included... You also, is the same by as the way, rent. let me add also, when you sell, you have to pay a 6% commission to the realtor. Correct. That means to break even, the thing has to appreciate by 6%. So it has to sell for 120000 instead of 110 or Yeah, 100. well, guess what? <laughs> There's no guarantee it's going to go that high. No, but at least if you... Well, look, darling, you've already made is... your decision. Why are you calling me for information? First you call me, and then you argue with me. Well, I'm just saying if you they... know more than I do, then don't don't ask me for advice. Do whatever you want. What do you think the best I think would it, be, then? I think to, to buy someplace you don't love, that you don't plan to live for at least five to ten years, if not forever, is a bad idea right now. Bad. Right. Bad, period. My second scenario is if I purchase uh, with my brother, we could afford a $500,000 house in Huntington It's not the amount of the house. Okay. Really? It has to be some place you're going to live where you got I see you're 29 years old, plan to get married ever, plan to have children ever. You're going to really. Your brother so you're going to live alone for the rest of your life. I don't know. It's That's kinda, my point. You uh, don't know. It's a 30/70 though. It's not like a 50/50. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go ahead and live with your brother. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that in, in 10 years... when I And is he ever going to get married? He's decided he doesn't want to get married. Yeah, but I, I, that's fine until he meets somebody and knocks them up. Well, he swings for the other team, so what fine. are you going to do? All right. Point is, so he's never going to have anybody he's in love with? He's never going to have anybody to live with him? Well, in 10 years when we can sell it, then it'd be the same. That's my so. point. Well, why? If, if you're planning on selling, <laughs> don't be buying. So what's the best case scenario? So only if you want to live there for the rest of your life to buy a house? I am saying we're talking long term. Because I say in the next 10 years... And I am, I, again, I'm not a certified financial planner, not a right. stockbroker, not a realtor. This is my opinion based on a lifetime of experience buying and selling my own houses, okay? Correct. My guess is it will take at least 10 years just to get back to where we were two years ago. Okay. So you're saying wait then and just keep saving, saving, saving. I'm saying wait until you can afford the place of your dreams. Okay, I agree with that, and I've been kicking it back and forth. So uh, where I live, I do like where I live. It's one mile from work. All My right, and that has value. That, sa years. that saves wear and tear in your car. It saves you gasoline. On top of that, you're saving property taxes. You're saving maintenance fees. You're saving PMI. You're saving the cost of maintenance. You're saving the cost of a leaky roof or a leaky pipe under the sink. Damn my family and friends because they all say the opposite. But I agree with you. That's they don't I'm know saying. what they're talking about. All right. They how many of them? Things. How many of them are self-made multimillionaires? Just one. Uh, but <laughs> they won't give me any money. <laughs> well, neither am I, and I'm a self-made multimillionaire. All right. Well, thanks, Tom. I really love your advice, and I agree with everything. Megan, so good luck. Thank you. Just got to be conservative. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.